we're gonna cover the finances, the house stuff, everything you need to know. With the market shift and ever changing rates, this is the guide to success in real estate. After that, we're gonna not you. <laughs> My name is Christina Alexa. Thank you so much for landing on my channel. I'm Sandra Mion and I am a lender here in Las Vegas, Nevada. What are the different types of loans? There's a couple, but the ones I'm going to name today are conventional, FHA, VA, and USDA loans. So those are kind of typically the, the, the main four. Um, conventional loans, this is your kind of, it's, it's called a conforming loan, which means it conforms to all the guidelines. It's basically your, you know, your A plus student. The conforming loan is the perfect loan and um, I wouldn't say the perfect loan, but the best loan I think I would go with. Um, so for a conventional loan, it's a 5% down. Um, that is the minimum that you need to put down, but you can put down as much as you want. Um, you need a minimum of 620 credit to qualify for a conventional loan. Um, and with a conventional loan, you do need a uh, private mortgage insurance. That is also built into your loan. It's kind of a quote that we typically receive um, in our system, so it's already built into your monthly payment. However, if you did want to get rid of your uh, mortgage insurance premium, you can pay 20% down right up front, and that will get rid of your mortgage insurance. That's typically you know, estimated around $200 monthly, so that can save you quite a bit of cash. It, it solely has skewed, though, to like a common misconception that you need 20% down. That's where that like misconception comes from. Not true. It, yeah, very, very not true. It's a... Um, it's good to do if you're like in a place to do that and you want to do that all the way, like we'll support you, mm -hmm. but it's absolutely not true. The only time you need 20% if you're buying an investment property. That yeah. is mandatory. You need to put 20% down if you're buying an investment. But other than that, no. The minimum you can do is three and a half on an FHA. With FHA, you need it to be your primary residence. You need a 580 minimum credit score. And the minimum down payment for an FHA is three and a half percent down. I need a Mac and cheese. This shit's fucking bomb, by the way. So this bomb. So, VA loans. VA loans are super cool. This is if you're a veteran or if you're a surviving spouse of a veteran. So, uh, typically, you know, you need a good credit score. A good credit score is essential for getting you a good rate. Like, typically, you can get, you know, a, a 580 credit score can probably land you at a 7% rate right now. But an 800 can get you a 6.125. That is a whole lot different of a difference, game. a different ball game, and it will save you hundreds in your monthly payment. But at the like bare minimum for a first time home buyer, I know I get a lot of those. What mm -hmm. would you say they should have? Um, you know, qualifying for a conventional, which is great, is 620. So I would say stay in the 620 ball game. But if you do want a good rate, I want you to be in the 700s range, mm -hmm. at least a 700. Those numbers just depend, and this is all just mm -hmm. prep. Usually what clients do is like send me a DM, an email, and we meet one on one and go into your portfolio together. Uh, I know it's like a thing that a lot of people are, not that they're afraid to come to me, but they're like, oh, I want, I'll talk to you when I'm ready. It's like, I get you ready. So it's like a, another common misconception. Like, yes. you don't, like, how do you, like, what do you mean when you're ready? You don't, like, you don't know what you want. Like, right. you don't know how, like, the numbers, like, let me help you get ready. Yeah. You drive the boat, I'm just giving you directions. So... How do you qualify for a loan? You're probably wondering, like, what does it take? How do I, how do I get the home that I want? And you want to save some money for closing costs and down payment, which we can help you with. Mm -hmm. um, you need two years of employment. You need two years of living history, whether you live at your mom's house, whether you live, you know, with a roommate, whatever. We just need two years. And that's typically um, what we need to qualify. If you need a co-borrower, that's fine. We will use the, um, the worst credit score out of the both of you so just keep that in mind you don't want a co-signer with you know a 520 credit and you have a 780 we're just better off not having them on the loan what sandra is going to produce is what's called a pre-approval letter and it's basically just a one page statement that says blah 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 mary joe is approved to this much with this company you and i are out and we're driving around town we're finding all the fun houses and how that works is basically like you tell me on that initial consultation your wants your needs and i go and i basically i like to call it a lifestyle match because i do work with like a lot of people from california i'm from california myself and i'm like oh you lived here i know that like you had this and this and this and then because i know vegas i can be like hey this reminds me of your neighborhood back home uh and even if you're not from california if you tell me what you like about where you are from uh i can easily direct you to what neighborhood i think might be a good fit for you and we can look all over town of course but you know whatever amenities you're looking for we definitely have them in vegas 
Okay, so once we've had our fun and looked at a bunch of houses, you will probably, most likely, find the one that you would like to write an offer on, and I go back to the office, hard at work, to write this offer for you. Mm -hmm. And this is where the finances that I was doing before, when you got pre-approved, this is where that comes into play, because Christina's mm -hmm. going to write that in your offer. If you, need, if you did need the seller to give you closing costs, cover some closing costs, anything like that, there's a section in the offer that is called additional terms. We write that in there, we talk with the uh, listing agent, we negotiate it, and we lock down the crib. Yes. Yay. <laughs> now you're under escrow. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to say, you will get under escrow. So once you submit an offer, there's three outcomes that could happen, and that it's, it's, it's accepted, and you open escrow, they can reject it, or they can counter it. And if they counter it, it's going to be against any of those additional terms or even the written in terms that we might have written. If uh, counters come to play, I go to you, I give you my expertise, we talk to the lender and say, can we do this, can we not? Because sometimes that counter could be like, hey, detrimental, yeah. yeah, detrimental, hey, the seller can't give us 10 grand, they can only give us 6 grand, you know? Mm -hmm. We, from there, will assess our needs and then we can either, to that counter, counter back or we, balls in our court, we can um, accept it, reject it, etc, etc. You guys get it. What That basically just goes around until you open escrow. So what escrow means is uh, under contract. Typically, this is like a 30 to 45 day period. Could be shorter, could be longer. But basically, the first day that you open escrow, you are under contract and it is a... Um, a, I'm not gonna say a sprint, but a, definitely a marathon to the finish line, For which sure. is closing and day. And we're all a team. We are all on the same team. You have to help us help you yes. close your loan. Please send your documents on yeah, time. Yeah, another thing. Oh my god, yeah. So, it, once you're in contract, it's um, not so much, like I would be honest, not so much the fun stuff, looking at houses and stuff. It's really like... The hard work. It's really the hard work, and it's really like... I, I like to set expectations up front. It's like, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait. Like, when we text you asking for certain items or documents, please, like, time is of the essence, get those to us ASAP and then wait because we're waiting on something else, blah, 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 yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, and we I don't want to further delay the process. Exactly. We don't want to be the people in the transaction ever that are delaying for what, one reason or the other. Um, and again, just setting the expectations. It, it could be frustrating because you, um, as a home buyer, I've seen a lot of clients that are like anxious and nervous because it's a hurry up and wait game, hurry up and wait game. And a lot of times our answers are like, we're just waiting for this. Like that's the only, like we yeah. can't give you answers beyond that. And just putting that up front, the home buying process is, like I, like Sandra said earlier, um, it is a lot but with the right, right guidance. We will make it as fun as possible. You open escrow and within two or three business days, whatever we write in the contract, you're going to send in your EMD, which is an earnest money deposit. Usually this is like 1% or even less than 1% of the house. Here, here in Vegas, it's like common to send like a, a check for like three grand, maybe five like grand. five grand. Yeah, it's like nothing major. And this will be credited to you at closing. So it's not like an extra three, five, whatever grand. Your earnest money deposit is exactly that. It's a deposit and it will be credited to you at closing. The EMD is in, escrow is opened. We're gonna close probably like 45 days from now. Sandra, what are you doing at this time? I'm in office working hard on your loan, making sure we get approved. Yes, and you and I are setting up two things, the home inspection and the appraisal. Similar, extremely different. Listen up. Home inspection is a third party, neutral party that comes out to the home and inspects everything that we cannot see with our, you know, our human eyes. And also, I'm not, I don't build houses for a living, I sell them. And they know what they're talking about. Um, and they will basically take about, it's like an hour or a couple hours. And at the end of this inspection, we go to the property, we meet with them, and they give us a, it's not a pass or fail. What it is, it's just a report that says, hey, this is something that should be fixed, this is something something that should be fixed. We take that list, we say thank you so much Mr. Inspector, because he explains everything to us, he gives us all the pictures. We say thank you so much uh, Mr. Inspector, you and I take that list, when you go, we go back and discuss it, this is where you lean on me a little bit. It's not, like I said, it's not a pass or fail, it's a, hey, I want certain items repaired before I move in, you know, nobody wants to move into a house that has a couple um, things that's not, you know, as in the best condition it can be. Mm -hmm. So we choose big ticket items and we write up a re request for repairs to the seller that basically says, hi, Mr. Seller, I am the buyer. I had a home inspection done. Here's that report attached. I noticed in the report that maybe um, 
I don't know, the caulking in the bathrooms are not as filled as they need to be. Please get this done before I move in. And then Mr. Salo responds to us and says, yes, I'm going to do that. Or, hey, I don't really, um, I'm not going to do that. But here, I want to give you a credit so you can get that taken, taken care of when you close. And it's a, finance, it's a monetary credit. So maybe if it's a huge paint job, they'll, they'll match whatever the job is done for. Okay, that's the home inspection. The appraisal, we don't show up and we we kind of are not a part of this. We get an appraisal once the appraiser, which is a uh, licensed professional, comes out to the property. And this is basic. It, it is for us. It's for the loan. It's um, also, yes. um, but it's really for the city to uh, know how much your home value is worth so they kind of know what to tax you on as far as property taxes. <laughs> okay, relax. Okay, okay, okay. We're like, dude, what are you <laughs> So after your um, appraiser comes by and gives you an appraisal on the home, you're ready to get your final approval on your loan and we're ready to schedule your closing date. Yay! And Closing date is what they call like the table or closing table and we basically set a conference table like this, make some small talk and you sign some papers. That's yeah. how it's basically sign your life away. Yeah. No, that's not true. But kind of. <laughs> that's true. So um, we schedule that time, like whatever works best for you and your work schedule or whatnot, to go meet at the conference room, uh, in a conference room of the escrow and title company. And if you're uh, relocating or out of state, we just send a mobile notary to your location to get it done. Because this, this is something that cannot be done, uh, like via DocuSign or anything like that. It has to be done in person. Yeah. And it's basically a stack of papers this big. Your wrist will be a little bit tired after you are signing everything. And you are signing everything that needs to like all of like the state local and the banking's compliance that needs to be signed for your get like for you to get title and for the like it's basically the entire mortgage and all of the um, parameters around it in yeah. in writing and you do get a copy of everything and then they send it home with you into like a big ass like folder yeah. and after this i I uh, I show up with you to this meeting. By the way, I'm, I'm holding your hand the whole time. And uh, after this, we all we all we do is wait for the county, the local county here in Las Vegas, to send me an email. I technically cannot give you the keys until I get a notice in an e email from Clark County that the transfer title has recorded from seller's name to your name, and you are officially the homeowner. And then I'll call you, text you, meet you wherever, and we will meet so I can transfer you over the keys, and you are a homeowner! Woo! Yay! Only thing else we want to add is a couple like post closing things. I know one of the things I always give my clients is just um, a guidance sheet for utilities, like how to turn those on and where like to set up your Wi Fi and all of that. And then where do they go to pay their mortgage? I get this question from every buyer. Mm -hmm. So typically, I mean, your lender or your mortgage company should be sending you an email um, a couple weeks before your first payment due date and that is they'll give you the link basically to either um, pay it online or you know you're gonna get your first payment letter in the mail and you can pay it through there um, you know through through mail but yeah most people set it up online yeah and your automatic payments and all of that as well mm -hmm. but you can always follow up with your lender and be like hey um, how do I do my first payment but with a lender like me we send you an email couple weeks before your first payment we go hey is everything okay did you make your first payment correct I mean did you set up automatic payments yeah. correctly how are you doing do you need any help so that's what a good lender should be doing for you so now breathe and remember that this is all very achievable and millions of people buy homes every year so if they can do it you can too how yeah and like I said with the right guidance us by your side you're gonna get there thank you for watching me to reach out as always my information is in the description box below and like I said make sure you get connected with me sooner than later I would love to add you to my monthly newsletter and to my VIP list of clients and same here to stay on top of everything in the home loan world my contact information will be in the description below hers and yeah please contact me let's get you on a timeline let's get you a home this year how yeah how close by houses <laughs> thanks for watching cheers